Well, I would like to give a homily on the Feast of the Assumption, <clears throat> a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> very beautiful passage and a very beautiful day. I was actually baptized on this day, <laughs> celebrating the feast of my baptism, feast of the Assumption of Mary into Heaven. I just want to focus really on one simple concept, that Mary never said no to God. Mary never said no to God. Mary was focused on pleasing God, doing what God wants, being a pencil in God's hands, being an effective instrument of God's love. Her only concern was to not get in God's way. And you see that her whole life. In the reading I just read, when she found out she was pregnant, <clears throat> The first thing she did was she also knew her, her cousin was pregnant. She went to share this joy with Elizabeth. And that meant riding on a donkey through the mountains, okay, through the mountains, up and down, hills, probably pretty hot weather. I'm sure she was thirsty, probably didn't have enough food. But she did that as an act of charity, and she spent three months with Elizabeth, even though she herself just found out she was pregnant. Later on, we see at the wedding at Cana, Mary was at a wedding. How often do we go to weddings and worry if there's enough food or wine? We don't. That's not our problem. But Mary was focused on pleasing God, pleasing others, taking care of a situation that was going south. She noticed they were running out of wine and she resolved it. Think about how many times in the life of Joseph and Jesus, Mary basically prepared meals wash the clothes, clean the house. I'm sure she was worrying about her neighbors. I'm sure she cooked some meals for her neighbors. This is what I'm thinking. I think about my mom. That's what she did. I'm sure Mary did that and more, so much more. Later on, Mary was at the foot of the cross, right? Mary was right there with Jesus, consoling him, watching him die. How hard would that be for a mother? And then, for me, one of the most amazing things is, you know, after Jesus died, she didn't check out. She continued to help the apostles, pray with the apostles, encourage the apostles, live with John, who became kind of the leader of the apostles in a way, the spiritual leader. Encouraged John. And then when she got to heaven, she needed to sit on her throne and say, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I've crossed the finish line. I mean, if anyone has ever run a marathon, the last thing you want to do after a marathon is run another mile, even another tenth of a mile. There's nothing left in the tank. You're about to collapse. You do collapse on the finish line because <laughs> mentally you just gave it all. When Mary gave it all, she collapsed and then she continued to give 2,000 years of service since then from heaven. She was assumed into heaven as queen of heaven and she's still interceding for us today. You know, I was just running on the CNO Canal Trail this morning. And I've been running there for almost 20 years. And this morning, I heard a little crack above me as I was running. And this fairly substantial waterlogged branch fell on my left shoulder. I've got a little raspberry I won't show you, but it's a little, uh, a little sore right now. But that branch could have landed on my head. 
and I wouldn't be doing this video right now. I'd probably be unconscious in the hospital. And why am I telling you this? Because we don't know when we're going to go. As a runner, I could get clipped by a car. You know, I could get, I don't know, I could have a heart attack. As human beings, we could die at any moment. We don't know when we're going to be called. But as long as we're here, as long as we're alive, we need to be giving, spending, loving, doing what God wants, serving others, not getting in God's way, not slowing God down, trusting in his love, trusting in his grace. That's the lesson I think Mary wants us to learn, is to keep going until the very end with all the love in our heart. <clears throat> you know, my mom, I remember my, my mother, it's so hard losing a mom. I lost her three and a half years ago. I just talked to a gentleman actually today on the trail who lost his mom a few weeks ago. And we were just talking about, boy, it really breaks your heart when you lose your mom. Because she, she loved us so much. I think of how much Mary loves us so much. And my mom would tell me, you know, Michael, nothing can be that hard if you love God. I'm sure Mary would say the same thing to Jesus. Jesus, nothing is hard. You just need to love God more. Love God more when it gets hard. Eventually, we're going to meet him. We're going to hug him. We're going to be with him. We're going to be hopefully in heaven forever. We get one pop in this world, one shot. We can't do it again. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Mary. Keep praying. Keep going to Mass and confession because we need that grace to stay in the game and keep giving of ourselves 100% all the time, 24-7 for Jesus. God bless you. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great Sunday.